In yesterday's video, I covered the upcoming ROG Strix lineup featuring up to an RTX 3080 mobile GPU and quite a few guys were left wondering about the specifications of the RTX 3080 mobile and of course the entire RTX 3000 mobile graphics cards and this is exactly what we're going to be talking more about in today's video and we're also going to have a look at some prices for the next generation of laptops but before we do that, do make sure that once you're done with this video, you can go and watch all of these videos where I'm talking about the upcoming next generation of laptops featuring RTX 3000 mobile graphics cards, Ryzen 5000 mobile chips, Intel's Tiger Lake, and of course the RX 6000M, but the information with regards to those is a little bit scarce, so you're not going to find all that much about them, but still, it's good information to have. Now, it's also good to note that this information that I'm bringing you guys is based on a rumor and not a leak, so do take all of this information with a grain of salt. So without further ado, I guess it's time to talk about the RTX 3080, which you might know at, by this point if you watch my videos, it's going to be based on the GA104 chip and not on the GA102 chip like we've seen on the desktop variant. And this also means that we're only going to get GDDR6 memory and not GDDR6X. And we're also only getting 6144 CUDA cores, which is still 256 more than on the desktop RTX 3070 that I'm rocking at the moment. And this GPU should also come equipped with either either 8 or 16 gigabytes of VRAM, which would be a first time in both cases. And it's also going to come in two different flavors, those being of course Max-Q and Max-P. And you can obviously expect that the Max-P variant is going to be faster than the Max-Q variant. And if you don't know what all of that means, then you can find out more in the link in the video description. I'm going to have it posted over there. Now it's also worth noting that the Max-P variant is going to be able to be configured by laptop manufacturers with up to 150 watts, which is still 70 watts less than on the desktop 3070, but in terms of performance you might get something really good out of it. Now in terms of clock speeds, we've seen that this one is going to be clocked between 1.1 and 1.7 gigahertz, but I reckon you're going to be able to tweak all of these um, graphics cards to get a little bit extra juice out of them, you know, extra performance, extra house horsepower, depending on <laughs> whatever you want to call it right now. But of course, this is also going to depend a lot on the cooling systems that they're going to be putting inside of these laptops. So, you know, your mileage might very well vary. Now, the RTX 3070 Mobile has also been spotted quite a few times, and this one is going to have a GA104 chip, but have, of course, 768 fewer CUDA cores. Now, in terms of memory, we're getting the same 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 across a 256-bit bus, much like on the desktop variant. In terms of clock speeds, we're again having something similar to the RTX 3080 mobile with speeds between 1.1 and 1.62 gigahertz and like I was saying in the beginning we've already seen companies mentioning the max Q and max P variants in there and the TGPs seem to be the same as for the mobile RTX 3080. Again, this means that the RTX 3070 max P will outperform the max Q variant so um, perhaps you are going to want to get yourself a Max-P variant. Now, of course, in terms of performance, this kind of makes the RTX 3070 Max-P similar to the RTX 3060 Ti, considering that the 3060 Ti has 256 fewer CUDA cores and clock frequencies between 1.41 and 1.65 gigahertz. But of course, um, you also need to note that that one has 200 watts of power available to it, and these ones are only going to have up to 150 watts, so it really depends how this is going to perform and again cooling will be definitely important but you can look at the performance to be similar to maybe the RTX 3060 which is also going to be unveiled really soon and I have a video talking about the RTX 3050, 3050 Ti and the 3060 and you're going to find them either in the info cards above of course or the video description down below. Now some of you are still interested in getting the lower end RTX 3060 and we're going to be talking about it and this one is going to be based on the J106 chip and we don't know very much about it other than we're expecting to find it in the RTX 3050 Ti and I've also talked about how these cards um, are going to hopefully perform in some of my videos but on the desktop side of things we're expecting to see the RTX 3060 come in two variants 6 and 12 gigs but on laptops we're only going to get the 6 gig variant for now it doesn't mean that we're not going to see a 12 gig variant so we might have to wait a little bit longer for that maybe in the second half of 2021. 
Other than that, the rumor indicates that we could expect this GPU to feature 3072 CUDA cores with frequencies between 900MHz and 1.7GHz, and again, the Max-Q and Max-P variants should both be available, and we've seen some laptop manufacturers already including them on their next generation of laptops. However, the maximum TGP is going to be 115 watts, and for the Max-Q variant, we expect it to be up to 70 watts. Now, you may also look at this chart being put, which has been put together by video cards to see how they might compare to the previous 20 series mobile GPUs. But remember that these laptops will also be paired with the latest Ryzen 5000 and Tiger Lake chips, with some exceptions, of course, because uh, Intel is, doesn't have the 8 core Tiger Lake. H processors yet, so we're still going to get Comet Lake on some laptops. And speaking of that, we've already seen prices for the next generation of laptops from Gigabyte, but in due time they have told they have told Tom's Hardware that the prices are completely wrong. However, yesterday um, Video Cards has posted an article talking about another Dutch um, manufacturer, this one being Skik, if I remember correctly, and these laptops are going to be priced a little bit better than what we've seen for the Gigabyte um, laptops, but of course I would still think that they're a little bit pricier. <laughs> now looking at the exact prices, I'm going to read them out to you. These are going to be, so for the RTX 3060 with an Intel 10875H, you can expect to pay 1700 euros and the last rest of the laptops that I'm going to be talking about, they are all going to have the same Intel Comet Lake 10870H, so I'm not going to say the processor. Now for the RTX 3070, this one is going to be about 2000 euros. For the RTX 3080 Max-Q, this is going to be 2600 euros, which is really steep. Now, the RTX 3066 gig is going to be about 1800 euros. The RTX 3070 Max Q is going to be 2000, and the RTX 3080 is going to be 2600 euros. And um, I can say, oof, those prices are a lot higher than what we've seen about the from the leak about the MSRP for the upcoming laptops that are going to come out. That should have been between $999 uh, and up to 2000, and of course, more dollars for the RTX. 3080 laptops with top of the line Ryzen chips and top of the line Intel processors. Now, of course, this doesn't mean that uh, these uh, prices are final, but they do look a little bit, you know, safer than um, what we've seen from Gigabyte because those were um, those turned out to be placeholders. So I'm still not sure if these are going to be the final prices that you guys are going to be paying for the next generation of laptops. And of course, it really depends on the country that you're from because I heard from many of you loud and clear that in India and Greece and many other places around the world, uh, laptops tend to be a little bit more expensive. So, you know, you also have to take into consideration that we're still dealing with bots, scalpers, and of course the ongoing human malware pandemic and some other things that are going on at the moment. So it it's still unclear how much these laptops are going to end up costing in your region, but I sure hope that all of those things are going to get sorted out and we're going to um, get some good prices out of them. Now, we can of course talk more about in the comment section down below about the performance of these laptops, what you think about availability, and of course, if you have any other questions, just drop them in the comments down below. I'm going to try to um, reply. Now, of course, as I said in the beginning, you can go and watch um, the entire playlist where I'm talking about the next generation of laptops because there is a ton of information to find out out there. And be sure that any kind of information that I'm going to hear about uh, the laptops that are going to be presented at CS 2021 and later on in you know, the second half and so on and so forth is going to be showcased in on this channel and otherwise it's going to be available in the video description and I think some of you might have already spotted that yesterday I already included the prices for these Skik laptops. So yeah, do make sure to check the video description as well next time. Either way, that's all the time that I had for today. I thank you guys once again for watching and I'll catch you hopefully in the next video. Bye.